Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. We are slowly closing our book on DSO-138 oscilloscope. In today's video we will deal with a few remaining functionalities, that we have mentioned in previous videos, but did not cover in full. These are some of more advanced functionalities of DSO-138 oscilloscope, but even if you are novice, or this is the first time you are using an oscilloscope, do not be afraid, we will do our best to explain all of these advanced features, using plain language and a lot of examples. Let's get started. Now, before we begin, there are a few prerequisites, regarding watching some of our previous videos, and getting familiar with signal stabilization, and trigged function of the oscilloscope. Please, if you have not seen these videos, pause the playback, go and watch them, and then come back. Throughout this video, we will heavily rely on topics covered in those previous videos, and skills you need to possess, in order to fully grasp, and understand what we are about to present, regarding advanced features of DSO-138 oscilloscope. Assuming that you have now familiarized yourself with all the necessary prerequisites, let's start with first of three advanced display mode features, and that is auto display mode. If not already in this mode, let's set our oscilloscope to auto display mode of work. Like in all other scenarios, we will do this by pressing select push button to set focus on second icon from the right at bottom of the screen. Display can show one of three possible choices, auto, norm, and single. After setting focus, use minus push button to change display to auto. Now, again, using select push button set focus on time division icon and make sure that your screen display is not paused. The display at top left corner of the screen should read running, not hold. If you have paused display, set focus on time division icon, and then push OK button. That will resume signal display in auto mode. Let's provide a signal to our oscilloscope, and by using what we have previously learned, let's center signal display, both horizontally and vertically. After that, by using trigged function, let's stabilize our display, and by using falling, or rising slope of the signal, and right hand arrow pointer, enable trigged function of the oscilloscope, and set our green LED to flash in rhythm of the input signal. If you have done all these steps, you should have a clean and stable signal, displayed on the screen. Now, let's see what this auto mode is all about, and when and why, we should use this mode of work, to display our signal. As the name suggests, auto mode will automatically display input signal, at the best possible refresh rate, supported by the oscilloscope. In this mode of work, you will see signal displayed in real time. To display signal in real time means, that any change in input signal is processed immediately by internal workings of the device, and it is displayed on screen as soon as possible. In real time doesn't mean immediately, or synchronous with input signal. Real time means, at best effort to keep up with changes in signal, as soon as they are detected, and being able to be processed and displayed. To answer the question, when and why we should use this mode of work, we need to step back and take into consideration the input signal itself. If we are not familiar with origin or parameters of the input signal, such as frequency, period or amplitude, then setting the oscilloscope in auto display mode would be considered a good practice. By doing so, we will be able to easily center and stabilize signal display, as previously mentioned. At this point, you might ask, if this display mode is easiest to work with, why even bother to change it? As with all things in life, none of them is all just good news. There are always some drawbacks. The most obvious drawback of auto display mode is signal flickering. No matter how good of a job we have done, in stabilizing and centering signal display, due to nature of sampling, and present interference in the input signal, the signal will always jitter a little bit on the screen, especially, signals with high frequency and low amplitude. Next point you can argue is, pause the display. Sure, 
That will certainly deal with signal display stabilization, but it will also eliminate that real-time feature of auto mode. If we pause the display in auto mode, we are freezing signal display at a singular moment in time. Now, let's see what normal display mode of work can do for us, and our signal display. In order to fully appreciate and grasp all, what normal display work mode can do for us, it is necessary to be fully familiar with trigged function of the oscilloscope. If you have not taken to heart the advice from the beginning of this video, please, pause the playback, go and watch those prerequisite videos, and then continue with this one. First, let's set oscilloscope to normal display mode. Again, by using select button, set focus on second icon from the right, at the bottom of the screen. Then, by using plus push button, set display mode to normal. Now there are two scenarios. In first scenario, if you have ignored our recommendations regarding trigged function and signal stabilization, the display of the signal will seem frozen, much like, when you deliberately pause the display. Now, why is that? In normal mode of work, signal display is uncompromisingly tethered to trigged function of the oscilloscope. Display of the signal is refreshed, only, and only when oscilloscope senses rising or falling slope of the signal. In order for this functionality to work, you must adjust and set the trigged function of the oscilloscope by selecting either rising or falling slope of signal as trigger event and using right hand arrow pointer to set the triggering point in the signal. If any of these prerequisites is absent, your signal display will remain frozen. In second scenario, where all of the trigged functionalities of the oscilloscope have been set properly, and signal is centered on display, both horizontally and vertically, is where normal display mode of work comes to full fruition. In normal display mode of work, display of the signal is refreshed every time when oscilloscope receives triggering event. For example, if you have input signal with 5 Hz frequency, this means that signal display will be refreshed 5 times in 1 second. Consequently, signals with higher frequency will cause higher refresh rate of signal display. Have in mind, that maximum refresh rate is dependent of technical specifications of LCD display itself. Also, have in mind, that human eye cannot distinguish higher display refresh rates anyhow. So, if you have 20 kHz input signal, this by no way means that display will refresh signal display 20,000 times. Now, normal display mode of work marries best of both worlds, the real-time signal display from auto display mode of work, and signal display stabilization from normal display mode of work. This means, that signal display is refreshed as many times as it is needed, to achieve stable and jitter-free display, without compromising display of current value and shape of the signal in real-time. This mode of work provides the most stable display of the signal in real-time. This is very important, if you want to manually measure and calculate signals period, frequency, and point-to-point -point value. The third signal display mode of work is single mode. In this mode of work oscilloscope provides us with a snapshot of input signal. This is like a signal is taking a selfie. Joke aside, let's see when and why we should use this mode of work. We have said previously, oscilloscope is device that enables us to observe electric signals. So far, we have dealt only with continuous signals, of various shapes, frequencies, and amplitudes. But not all signals are like this. Sometimes, we will encounter intermittent signals. They are not continuous, and they appear briefly, for a short period of time, sometimes, even in not regular intervals, or they can be only one-time occurrence. Another scenario where we could use single display mode is when we want to observe start of the signal, at its very beginning. Now, if you ever made any RC circuit, you may or may not know, that initial state of the circuit depends on level of residual charge in capacitor. If you use RC circuit for signal generation, the first few periods of the signal will not have maximum amplitude, nor they will be shaped as the following periods of the signal, until RC circuit reaches its operational equilibrium. This is where single mode display comes into play.
When using single mode of work, you will initially set oscilloscope to this mode, but without providing any signal. Begin by using select push button to set focus on second icon from the right, at the bottom of the screen. Now, using plus push button, change icon appearance to single. Make sure your display is not paused. If it is, push OK button to resume display. For now, there is nothing on our display. Now let's provide input signal and watch what happens. As you can see, our oscilloscope took a snapshot of the signal, displayed it, and put display on hold. Let's take a closer look to what happened here. When our oscilloscope sensed presence of input signal, it begun processing it, by sampling it and displaying on the screen. Depending on number of periods sampled, and time division settings of the device itself, a small sample of the signal is captured and displayed, just enough periods to fill the display. Now, this is the point where it gets tricky. If we know nothing about our input signal, or we are observing it for the first time, how do we determine what vertical and horizontal scale factor to use? Well, we can't know for sure, but we can make a guess, or we can deploy some recommended best practices in this scenario. If we do not know anything about signal, we can take two approaches. We can set our scaling settings to maximum, and gradually dial it down, to lower settings, until we get satisfactory snapshot of the signal, or we can go another way around. We can set our scaling setting to minimum values, and gradually increase it, until we get a satisfactory display. If we deploy first scenario, one with maximum settings, we can experience no signal being displayed at all. This is a sure tell that we have it on to too high settings, and we need to dial it down. On the other hand, we can get just a line across display. This tells us that our settings are way too low, and we need to dial them up. This all looks very much like a guessing game, and it is. But, if we do not know anything about our signal, then there are just that many ways we can go about this, and this is one of them. Next advanced functionality that is available to us, regardless of the display mode we are in, is saving and recalling waveform. Waveform is just a fancy name for shape of signal. If for some reason we want to save displayed waveform, we can do so by pressing simultaneously select and plus push buttons. For short period of time, at the top right corner of the display, there will be notice that will read, saving. This procedure saves photo of the signal, to a non-volatile memory of the oscilloscope. This means that, even if you power down your oscilloscope for a certain amount of time, the image is safely stored. Just like saving to an USB flash drive. The procedure for recalling saved waveform is somewhat similar to saving. We will power up our oscilloscope, and then simultaneously press select and minus push buttons. This will recall and display our stored image of waveform. One of the reasons for saving and recalling waveforms could be, that you are designing and performing an experiment that you need to verify or recreate, and you want to have comparison to the original result from first trial. Now, with this video we will close our book on DSO-138 oscilloscope for now. Our goal in this DSO-138 series, was to make videos that will explain not only how, but also why, certain features and procedures are the way they are. We hope that we have brought you a few steps closer, in fully understanding operational procedures of the oscilloscope, and inspired you to venture on your own in wonderful world of exploring electronics, with a little help from our videos. In the next season on our channel, we will build a poor man amplifier, so stay tuned. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.